We're gonna get right into it. I, you know what I like about this the most? Look around and look at the diversity you see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she was like, yeah! And that's because her dude is black. And I understand. <laughs> you know my thing about interracial dating? If you would another race, I do want you to make the thing that that race makes. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I was with a Filipino girl, we was hanging out, and she said she didn't make lumpia. <laughs> I said, well, you not Filipino then. That's what, I could have stayed with a black girl to not get lumpia. I'm here for the lumpia. That is your only advantage <laughs> over Keisha. If Keisha don't make lumpia, if, if Keisha made lumpia, I wouldn't even be over here. I'm only here. That's, that's my thing. If I'm with you, you got to make what that race makes. If I'm with a Mexican, she got to make tacos. The real tacos, not black tacos with lettuce and, and hard shells. <laughs> I want real with, with uh, cilantro and guacamole. I want my... I want it to be so... I want it to come with a passport. I want it to be that authentic. <laughs> I want you to wrap it up in the papers from the wall they build, and I want it to be that <laughs> authentic. That's my thing. If I'm with a Filipino, she gotta make lumpia. If I'm with a Mexican, she gotta make tacos. If I'm with a white woman, she gotta make on-time pavements. That is my... <laughs> I wish you would be past due, Amy. What is this? <laughs> no, no, you pay yours in advance. That's why I'm here. I could have did this on my own if I wanted to be past due. White people pay their bills at a, 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 they do stuff. Did you even know that you could pay your bill before it even come? <laughs> they give the people permission to go into the account and just automatically take, no, I'll, it might not be there. I'll bring it to you. Don't go in my account touching stuff. I'll bring you the payment on the third. I know it's due on the first. I'm gonna bring it on the third. I got three days. Everybody know that. That's what I'm saying. You got to teach each other. Why people, you pay your bills. You got to learn how to do it from us. We'll teach you how to do it. Make the minimum payment. <laughs> Stop paying that big number in black. That's a lie. The little number in red is what you got to focus on. That's how much to keep it on till next month. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to win no bill paying award. Fuck you, T-Mobile. <laughs> Telling you, like my man, you in the right in the front row with your white girl. That's brave. <laughs> That's one of the ones proud of their white women. Come on, Susan, don't mind them. They don't know our struggle. Come on, that. No, no, no. Don't worry about them, Susie. Come on, where? <laughs> when they like that, they take their white woman to everything. Million Man March. Come on, fair kind of understand. Come on, we can. No, you can hear the teachings. Come on. Take your white girl. You took her to see Black Panther? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we was just looking like, look at this nigga here. I mean, <laughs> this is our time. Take her to see Pink Panther. Why <laughs> is this colonizer amongst us? We showed up for Black Panther. We showed pride for Black Panther. That's... You know what happened? You know, Hollywood said that uh, a black hero couldn't make that kind of money in a box office. You know the movie made over $1 billion in three weeks? Now, that had never happened before because Hollywood was saying that a black film with that many black people in the cast couldn't make that kind of money. So black people showed up and showed them our power. 
over three, over one billion dollars in three weeks, primarily because black people showed up, seen it two and three times, and we got all decked up. We had on dashikis and the whole nine. Theater I went to, a dude had a real lion on his shoulder, feeding him grapes. Oh, do your thing. And we showed pride. Over one billion dollars in three weeks, people. Only $250 at the concession stands total. Because we were sneaking in food at record numbers. The theater I went to, somebody was barbecuing in the theater. I said, fam, they're going to see the smoke. You're going to... He said, you want a rib or not? You know I want a rib, but can you do it? <laughs> People were sneaking so much. The second time I went, I ain't even sneak my food. They know what I'm up to. I came in with my own bag of popcorn. Can you pop this for me, fam? I'm in theater number three. <laughs> we barbecuing. Come get you a rib. It's lit over there. Come on, come on. <laughs> Imagine taking out the trash at the Black Panther movie premiere. You the dude who take the trash out. You looking. When did we start selling Hennessy and chicken sandwiches? <laughs> at the Regal. When do <laughs> But you got your interracial love and that's fine, man. Yes, like I said, love who you love. When I see black dudes or white women, they don't bother me, man. This is my only thing, fam. If you're going to be with a white girl, I need you to be with an authentic white girl. A real white girl. I don't like when I see black dudes dating white women who act black. I'd be like, nigga, just get a black girl. Why are you messing around <laughs> with this off-brand generic white woman? If you're going to go, go on. Why you got this great value white woman? If you're going to go... Go all the way. If you see me with a white girl, I'm going all the way to Mayberry. I'm not messing around. I'm going to get the whitest woman. I want all the white stuff I heard about. I'm going to get me a gluten-free, uh, flip-flops in the rain, pumpkin spice latte, uh, kiss puppies in the mouth. Let her dog sleep in the bed with her put her feet on the dashboard on car rides, <laughs> make her own trail mix. I'm going to get all the... I'm going all the way. I don't know white girl talking black to me. Uh-uh, babe, on my mama. Yo, mama, no, no, you have a mother. Like, I want... I want the English to be correct. That's what... If I go, I'm, I want to be the first black dude she ever seen in person. She only heard myths and tall tales. I wanted to touch me like an African touching snow for the first time. I don't want her to know nothing about hip hop. Basic question, she failed a test. Hey babe, you like two chains? Yeah, I love jewelry. Like that kind of stuff. <laughs> Because if you have two chains and lose one, you still have a whole nother chain. Who wouldn't want two chains? Two chains and two pox. I'm talking real. I'm, I want her to be so white when she start talking to me, her family stop talking to her. Do you understand? <sighs> I just keep looking. Now, we didn't raise her like that. I don't, I don't know what she sees in Jamal. I hung out with a white girl one time. Wasn't nothing serious, we kicked it for a second. Be honest with you, I couldn't do it for too long. I don't like her hair. I don't like white girl hair. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> white girl hair sheds for no reason. <laughs> he put his head down all the time. You picked her, nigga, what did you expect? <laughs> It don't gotta be wet. They don't gotta comb it. You ever just hug a white girl and leave the hug? Like, what is all of this hair on my garments? It feel like you walked through a spider web. Oh 
You ever get hair from a white girl? You're trying to shower, you want to clean your area off, and you notice you keep finding strands of her hair stuck in your midsection, and you just keep, for days, you like, she literally gave me her head, because it's still, <laughs> So much hair in this area. <laughs> Fam, it's like Easter basket grass all over your penis. It will. <laughs> you lay in the bed with a white girl, get out your bed, look at your pillow. All of this hair left on your pillow. All of this CSI evidence. <laughs> left all on your pillow, man. So I love my sisters, my beautiful black African queens. That's right, because black women got the common courtesy and decency to take their hair off when they get in the bed with you. The scariest thing is when you ain't know she had it on. You had no idea she had that on. You kept seeing this, you ain't know what it meant. You just see she was doing that. And she, she take it off. And <laughs> I brought this girl home from the club one time. I go in the bathroom. I come out the bathroom. I see this, my same haircut, sitting on my bed. I went back in the bathroom. I called the police. I said, hey, man, it's a dude in here with my girl clothes on. I don't know what happened to my chick from the club, but he is here now. I heard this from the room. Is everything okay? And he got her voice down. This dude is good. Because that's the thing. As a black man, you don't know what's up under there. We see this, we don't know what that means. Till they snatch it off and we see they got them uh, 1996 Allen Iverson Corn Rolls, the, the killer crossovers. They got, they, they got the, them up under there, you know the braids, the Queen Latifah, the set it off braids, you know the braids. The straight backs, the, the, the Kawhi Leonard, but it's rookie season, you know the braids. I'm, not the new Kawhi, the old Kawhi. With, the OG Bobby Johnsons, the thanks Ray Ray, South Central, y'all know the braids I'm talking about. Either that or they got one braid that wrap all the way around and stick up at the top like this right here. They got the little alfalfa, the little, I thought my ex was a candle. I almost lit that wick on fire. I, <laughs> but the interracial, if you're going to do what you got to do. I got a cousin, only date white girls. That's all he date. So last year, he asked me to go with him to Thanksgiving with his girl's people. And it's, have you ever been to white Thanksgiving? <laughs> Black people got offended. No, we haven't. <laughs> I went, fam. I went to my first ever white Thanksgiving. I had to go with my cousin because I said, this might be a get out situation. <laughs> they, they might be trying to steal my homie's powers. <laughs> I got to make sure he's straight. Either that or I said, I'm at, least, I, at least I'm going to get some good jokes out of it. So here they go. I'm gonna tell you, I went to the White Thanksgiving, I'm gonna be honest with you. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. It wasn't that bad. Don't make that fair. It wasn't that bad. You know what I'm gonna tell you about White Thanksgiving? White people are efficient at Thanksgiving time. <laughs> Black people, you ain't gonna believe this. Fam, they ate dinner at 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we still in our pajamas. They done with dessert getting ready for Christmas by noon. They're trying to bring me some food at 11 o'clock in the morning. You hungry, Lance? You ain't got no cereal? That's 1030. I can't, <laughs> can't digest all of that at 1030. Who do you think I am? <laughs> and to my surprise, they ate all the same foods we ate. That, yeah, they all the same food. They, but they added raisins to all of it. It was. <laughs> Macaroni, cheese, and raisins. It was yams with raisins. It was raisin water. It bubbled up like Alka-Seltzer. I didn't trust it. I 
brought sweet potato pie to white Thanksgiving. They couldn't believe it. They said, oh my gosh, Lance, this is the best pumpkin pie we've ever tasted. <laughs> I said, that's not pumpkin pie, that's sweet potato pie. They said, what is sweet potato pie? I said, it's pumpkin pie with diabetes in it. And once you add, <laughs> when you add the diabetes, that's where the flavor come from. You don't need your foot, eat the pie. <laughs> Enjoy the pie, baby. He said, would you bring us some next year? I said, next year I got something even better. And he said, well, what could be better than sweet potato pie? I said, next year for Thanksgiving, I'm going to bring y'all some seasoning, some Lowry's. <laughs> some Lowry's have really changed the game in here, people. I know you think you like food now, but wait till you try it with seasoning. Oh my goodness. Total game changer. Tell you a black secret. Tell you a black secret. We start seasoning our Thanksgiving food the day before. Halloween, it take that long. We need that full 30 days. On a black house trick or treat, how does macaroni taste? <laughs> Little black kids know it's runny. <laughs> Come back in three Thursdays, it'll be right. Give me, <laughs> give me three Thursdays, it, it'll be right. I think, as you know, I, I preach unity, right? Like, we gotta get, like, racism is the most ignorant thing in the whole country. To hate somebody for the color of their skin. <laughs> To hate somebody for the color of their skin is pure ignorance. It's ridiculous, especially when there's so many valid reasons to hate somebody. <laughs> you ever talk to a new vegan? <laughs> the worst. Not a vegan, a new vegan. Like, if you say you're a vegan, I need to see a chart of how long you've been in the vegan game. I need to know how, how committed you are. Because the new vegans, they get right into the vegan thing and they just judge your life instantly. As <laughs> Soon as they get, I got a cousin, new vegan, judging my life all the time, asking me dumb ass, you been a vegan two weeks? Asking me these dumb ass questions. We eat and eat, ugh, cuz, how could you put that in your mouth? Nigga, the same way you did two weeks ago. <laughs> We used to eat this together. What are you talking about? They always change their social media names. No meat, Keisha 87. Like, just. <laughs> you know what they did was they watched that documentary on Netflix, that What the Health thing, and now they just went hard with the vegan life. My cousin, one documentary, want to judge my life, his life in shambles. <laughs> want to judge my life because he watched one documentary and now he a vegan and a crip. I'm like, that don't even go together. He... <laughs> Trying to give me life advice. Hey, cuz, you know red me to kill you. I say, so are the niggas in the red rags. So you got... <laughs> White people look confused. I'm sorry. The Crips is a gang in Los Angeles. There was a... Uh... Okay. Tookie Williams, Snoop Dogg, Nipsey Hussle. All right, just checking. <laughs> Telling you, it's never, racism is the worst. It's the worst. Matter of fact, the only time, the only time it is acceptable to be racist is when you're at home watching Family Feud. <laughs> you can't help it at that point. I root for the black family every time. Every episode, I'm rooting for the black family. I don't care what, if it's a black family on, then we own. Y'all gotta win this for a focus for the culture. Every time, I got, I root for the black family, man. See, what y'all don't understand, um, as a minority, when black people are on TV, we represent the whole culture. So when we mess up, it looks like the whole race messed up. When a white person messes up on TV, it just looks like a crazy white person messed up on TV. You understand what I'm saying? 
So when we, black person say something stupid in a microphone, y'all say, look, there they go again. When a white person say something stupid, y'all just say, I mean, well, he's the president. So. <laughs> It's a different ball game. <laughs> but I was watching Family Feud, like I always do, and it was the Harper family, and I was rooting hard for the Harper family. We gotta win this for a focus for the culture. <laughs> Steve Harvey asked a very simple question. Top five answers on the board. Name a man's name that begins with the letter H. And this dude buzzed in with the utmost confidence. Jose! <laughs> Did this nigga just say Jose? Did he just say Ho in front of all these people? He gonna set us back 300 episodes. Did he just say <laughs> Jose? What made it worse, the girl I was watching it with, she was like, good answer, good answer. I said, She's not gonna make it. <laughs> she won't last. <laughs> Y'all drinking tonight too? You know, some, this is something about me, right? I don't drink alcohol. So I'm always living vicariously through y'all who do drink. Y'all look like y'all having a great time. And it's not that I don't drink. I've never drank. I've never had a sip of alcohol in my life. And that's the response. <laughs> Normally people don't clap for that. Normally people don't give a shit. Like, they, <laughs> you gotta tell people you quit drinking and that's when they care. <laughs> That's when they show you love, when you say, yeah, I'm celebrating three years clean and sober. Turn my life around. Put the bottle down. They go, woo, good for you. I'm praying for you. Stay strong. But when you say you never drunk, oh, you little bitch. It's like, <laughs> you got to ruin your life first or nobody care. <laughs> People always ask you them dumb questions. If you don't drink, then how do you have fun? The same way you do, I just remember it. Like, what kind of question is that? <laughs> the real thing that happens when you uh, don't drink is everybody makes it their personal mission to be the first person to ruin your life. <laughs> they say, you don't drink? Well, try this. <laughs> like, no, I made a choice. <laughs> everybody, after shows, fans want to buy me drinks, Tell fans, no thank you, I don't drink. I go all my boys, I'm trying to kick your legs, have a sip. Fam, you already know, I don't drink. Even my girl, she had got in on it. Babe, on our honeymoon, I'm gonna get you drunk. And I had to tell her for the last time, we not getting married. Now I'm single. So, you know, it <laughs> all worked out. <laughs> I grew up around it, seeing it firsthand. Drugs, alcohol, right in my house, right in my community. I seen it, made me never want to touch none of it. I never smoked nothing. But I tell you, if I had to pick between drug addicts and alcoholics, I personally like crackheads better. Crackheads <laughs> are the backbone of this nation. <laughs> Crackheads are American heroes that don't get their respect, man. <laughs> a crackhead will clean your whole house in 10 minutes because he might find change. That is a hero, people. <laughs> that they don't, and they, they, all they do, all crackheads do is dance <laughs> and go get crack. That's their whole life is dancing. <laughs> and going to get cracked. Like, <laughs> that's their whole life. Alcoholics, always, they always want to fight. They're always angry. You ever be around an angry drunk? Alcohol affect everybody different. Angry drunk. They get one drink. Now they want to fight everybody in the spot. Just one drink. Fuck you, look at that. <laughs> yeah, you. Well, I don't give a shit. I'll fight everybody in this church. And you're like, what the <laughs> 
like, calm down, pastor. It's not even that serious. If you would... <laughs> They'll tithe next month. Relax. It's not... <laughs> Crackheads don't want to fight because they too busy dancing, man. You ain't got time to fight nobody when you dance. <laughs> Alcoholics too needy. They'll get drunk and then ask you for a ride home. No, figure it out. Crackhead had never got high and asked you for a ride home because they walk everywhere, fam, and they walk. <laughs> they be walking fast as shit. <laughs> <laughs> they always got random stuff in their hand, dresser drawers and Xbox controllers. And <laughs> kids clothes and all kind of stuff. <laughs> You be on the freeway, you doing 65. You look out the window, it's a crackhead walking on the freeway, <laughs> keeping up with your car. You, you say, I'm in the fast lane. He is incredible. <laughs> the best salesman in the world is a crackhead. You want to find you a deal? Find a crackhead who got something for sale. I don't even go Black Friday shopping no more. I go Crack Friday shopping. <laughs> That's where the real deal is, is that? <laughs> I came out the Walgreens the other day. Crackhead jumped out from behind a bush, dancing. <laughs> hey, young blood, I got something for ya. <laughs> That's what he hit me with. <laughs> jumped out from behind the bush and hit me with that. It messed me up. Cause there wasn't no bush there when I went inside the store. <laughs> he brought his own bush to Walgreens <laughs> to sell me miscellaneous items. That's drive. <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> Jumped out from behind his bush. I got something for ya. I said, look, man, I'm in, I'm in a rush. I got to go. He said, nah, hear me out. I got what you need. Deal of the century. I said, all right, what you got? What you got that I need? Check this out. I got this bunk bed ladder. I said, what? <laughs> he said, nah, young blood, I got you a bunk bed ladder. I said, look, man, I don't need no bunk bed ladder. I don't even have a bunk bed. I don't know what to do with that. I don't need, I don't have no use for that. What am I gonna do with a bunk bed ladder? Best salesman of all time. He looked me right in my face and said, well, how you gonna get to the top? <laughs> I never considered that. How much you want for the ladder, sir? How much? Because you think I'm standing down here, you are out of your mind. Came home with a bunk bed ladder. I was juiced. <laughs> that same girl watching Family Feud with was hating. What you got that bunk bed ladder for? Well, stay at the bottom, bitch. But um, <laughs> I am going places. <laughs> this is the thing about crackheads you gotta watch out for. It's the only issue with them is they steal. <laughs> Somebody got a testimony. Yes, sir. <laughs> they steal from you. They steal from other people to get you stuff. You ever got a crackhead gift? <laughs> it's always refurbished, something that came from somebody else. I got an uncle who was on drugs. He used to always give me crackhead gifts when I was younger. I'm 10 years old. For my birthday, he got me a used calendar. <laughs> Half the dates was already filled out. <laughs> My friend said, what we doing today, Lance? I don't know, because apparently I got jury duty. So I... <laughs> no. No kickball for me, says here, jury duty. So... <laughs> I'm busy with that. <laughs> but not only do they steal from other people, they'll steal from you too. Drugs is Powerful. Substance abuse is powerful. You'll steal from the people you love the most. My uncle was standing at my house, went to sleep with my money on my dresser. 
woke up, my money was gone off my dresser. That's on me. I got to smarten up. So the next night I went to sleep, I put my money under my pillow. I woke up, it was a tooth under my pillow. I said, this nigga is the crack fairy. Where did he get, where did he get a molar to put under my pillow? What? Just has those laying around. But I talked about the diversity in here. That's what's so powerful about stand-up comedy. We all come together, laugh together. You know, stand-up comedy is one of the last, maybe the last place where you can just tell the truth and bring people together racially. Stand-up comedy. <laughs> when used right, is probably the best thing for race relations in this country. The worst thing for race relations are slave movies. <laughs> yeah, this interracial relationship is about to get very uncomfortable. <laughs> slave movies is the worst. Like, listen, man, like, how many more slave movies do we need? Like, how, like Roots came out like 30 years ago. If you've seen Roots, a long ass movie, it take about three weeks to watch Roots. <laughs> you gotta call in sick and every, you can't just watch Roots in one sitting. What did they leave out in a three week long movie to keep making more slave movies? We get it. Like stop showing us this over and after Roots they came with it was, what, uh, Mississippi Burning, Rosewood, Amistad, then they had the, the new one, it was Medea does slavery. And then they had, uh, <laughs> 12 Years a Slave, Django, Planet of the Apes, um, Birth of a Nation, The Help, College Football. It's like, <laughs> at some point, we get it. Stop showing us this. Enough is enough. So I'm gonna tell you something y'all might not know, white people. I'm gonna tell y'all when I watch a slave movie, who I feel bad for. It's you. I feel bad for today's white people who got to live in a world with black people who just watch slave movies. <laughs> they don't even know, look at, they, they don't even know that when we watch slave movies, we don't like no white people for like three weeks. <laughs> we need a three week break from all white people. I don't wear white tees, nothing. I need a three week white break and it's not your fault you just look like the people in the movie. <laughs> I have nobody else to be mad at. You look like the people in the movie. I, when I see a slave movie, I go where I know it's gonna be a lot of white people and I just mean mug them. <laughs> I go where I know it's gonna be a lot of white people. I go to like Panera Bread. <laughs> the dog park. I know where y'all kick it. <laughs> I just put a hoodie on. I go to Starbucks, I got an attitude in Starbucks. The barista girl is as sweet as she can be. Hi, can I take your order? Yeah, let me get a coffee, black. <laughs> no cream, black. <laughs> okay, can I have your name, sir? Free man. That's my name, bitch, free man. Fam, they put slavery in the theaters so we can all come watch slavery together. How is that supposed to help us out? And I make it uncomfortable every time they do it. I get dressed up in full costumes for slave movies. <laughs> I get dressed up for slave movies like white people get dressed up for Star Wars. I'm talking, I got on shackles and the whole shit I'm walking <laughs> I sit right in the front row, in the very front, right in the front, whole theater behind me. I'm right, and I'm this in the front, my head way back here. <laughs> Every time something bad happened on the screen, I turn around and make direct eye contact with the white people in the theater. <laughs> make it real uncomfortable. Psh, ah! Ha <laughs> ha! 
make it uncomfortable. You know the worst part? They keep putting Oprah in slave movies. <laughs> Oprah Winfrey is a billionaire, fam. She can't be a slave no more. The, a billionaire. And they're always out in the field doing slave stuff and Oprah don't got answers. I don't know what we are gonna do. <laughs> and I'm like, Oprah, just buy the plantation. Why are we here? <laughs> Three hours if Oprah Winfrey is here. This should be a slave commercial. You get freedom, you get freedom, you get freedom, you get freedom. We go home. <laughs> Oprah, you don't see no other billionaires in slave movies. Wouldn't make no sense, fam. You saw other billionaires in slave movies. You saw Michael Jordan in a slave movie. He out there picking cotton with his own shoe on. <laughs> He got on the Freedom 12s. <laughs> Michael Jackson in a slave movie. Wouldn't make no sense. They trying to whip him, but he ducking. checking on other slaves. Annie, are you okay? <laughs> and it confused you, because the beginning of the movie, Mike is dark. He in the field. <laughs> By the end, he's a white woman. He owns <laughs> the plantation. This, <laughs> it's an amazing story. <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all the real, because there's a new slavery. They got rid of the old slavery came with the new slavery. The new slavery is the prison system. That's the new slavery. They just covered it up, changed the name. Y'all seen about the 13th Amendment? It's the whole new slavery. You know what I'm talking about? I just, you know what happened the other day, man? I went and, um, to a juvenile hall, and I went to talk to these kids, man. And it was heartbreaking, because these kids is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. Some of these kids doing 20 years for making one mistake when they was 15 years old. Heartbreaking, right? I went in there, I did some comedy, but then I told these kids my story. Told these kids, I'm just like you. Come from the ghetto, just like you. Came from a messed up house, just like you. Had obstacles, just like you. Only difference between me and you is I'm going home in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was telling my story, I told them, just like them, I had been to jail. So one kid said, what did you go to jail for? And I know why I went to jail, but I didn't want to say it. Because I said, they gonna think I'm a bitch. <laughs> but I told myself, I'm gonna go lie to these kids. So now, Y'all gonna think I'm a bitch too. <laughs> so I went to jail, it's no lie. I went to jail because I got into an argument with the judge in traffic court. <laughs> We're gonna make a long story short. It was a traffic light. Everybody in the courtroom was in court for the exact same reason. A red light violation with the camera on it. What they was doing was, they was catching you on the camera for not coming to a complete stop behind the white line. If a piece of your tire went on a, over the line, it was $500. So I was in court and I was trying to be like an activist. You know what, Judge? This is Fugazi. You think we all forgot how to drive just like that? This is obviously a setup. You think all of us going through the same thing? And he said, one more word out of you, Mr. Woods, and I'm gonna have you taken out of here. I said, I'm ready to go anyway. And he pressed the button and 11 sheriffs came in the room. <laughs> I thought you meant go home. I didn't mean go to jail. <laughs> they took me to jail for that. So I'm in jail and this is what I didn't know. I didn't know that when you go to jail, everybody goes to the same jail. <laughs> I thought I was going to like argue with the judge jail. Like I, <laughs> I'm supposed to be in here with the jaywalkers and the 
who didn't wait for that sign to go and just kept walking. I'm not supposed to be in here with them. I'm in the jail with the killers. In the whole tank with the, all of the teardrops. I say, he must really be sad. Like, cause he had so many on his face. <laughs> but they let me, I went to jail for a grand total of 12 hours. Didn't even miss a day of work. When I was in there trying to, trying to adjust to jail. Hey, who do the tattoos, homie? Cause I'm trying to get hit. <laughs> Give me a little teardrop or something, I'm here, might as well. <laughs> trying to come home, like, with street cred, what's up, I'm back home, baby. That's like, where you go? I... <laughs> nigga, home, nigga home now. What's... <laughs> I'm back, everything good, what's new on the streets? <laughs> Say nothing, it's just Wednesday. Yesterday was Tuesday, that's the only thing new. <laughs> But jail is such big business, man. Jail is a big, jail is so big. They put jail on TV now. It's a bunch of, have y'all seen Jailbirds? Yeah. They got a show Jailbirds on Netflix right at the Sacramento County Jail right up the street on I Street. When I seen that show, I was furious. How did these niggas get on Netflix before me? I should have just stayed in. I would have been so much more successful. <laughs> Go to jail, kids. You can make it. You can be on TV. <laughs> I understand entertainment. So that means if the show is doing too well, they can't let you out of jail. You the star of the show. <laughs> it's time for you to get released. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> The judge said, it's my time. But the executive producer said, <laughs> we need you. How much longer you got? Four seasons. <laughs> Y'all gotta see the, the, real, the real jail shows, the prison shows, like Lock Up. You ever see them joints? Lock Up is for real. And let me tell you something about this. They say African-American men make up 6% of America's total population. Only 6%. But... 65 to 70 percent of the prison population. When I seen that, I said, that's terrible. This is obviously system, systematic racism, trying to keep my people down, trying to hold us down. They got to let my brothers home. But then I seen lock up and I said, you know what? Keep them niggas there. They are where they need to be. This is, this is not okay. Every time they go to commercial, I say, but are they still there? Because if not, I'm going in. If they come out, I'm going in. It's no, we can't exist in the same world. These people are crazy. When you've been in jail too long, your criminal instincts is too high. You can do too much stuff. I seen a dude kill a man, stabbed him with a bar of soap. He made a bar of soap into a shank and stabbed the dude. That's a clean kill. Do you understand? <laughs> How dangerous it is if you're in the world with people who can kill with a bar of soap. There's no place in the world where you can't bring soap. <laughs> there is no metal detector. Boop. No, that Irish Spring can't come. Dude, <laughs> what the suspect looked like, I don't know, but he smelled delicious. <laughs> they do too much for their respect. That's what jail's all about, respect. I don't want to live in a place where respect on that level is like that. I seen a dude, this is the story he told. He said, tell you what I did for my respect. Dude owed me three packs of noodles. <laughs> <laughs> we talking top ramen. He said he owed him three packs of noodles. He didn't want to pay up. So what I did was, caught him in the broom closet. Started sucking his dick. Right before he climaxed, I stabbed him. Now you tell me who gonna tell the guards that's how they got stabbed. I said, what? Fam, if that's the length you're willing to act, are you willing to suck a dick for your respect? Fam. If that way, if you was the victim, who you gonna tell? <laughs> oh, I'm dying, call the cops. What happened? <laughs> Nigga, I fell on the knife. Call the police. 
one of the things that happened uh, amongst us black people is we got sick of a lot of stuff. We started boycotting a lot of stuff over the past few years. Black people have been boycotting. We've been saying, you know what? You don't respect us, then you don't get our money. This happened several times over the past few years. We boycotted Gucci for a second. You know, Gucci came out with the ad. They had the, the black face shirt. Then they had a shirt with a noose around it. And that's one boycott I got behind. Oh, really, Gucci? Fuck Gucci. I'm never wearing Gucci again. Dude, that's what y'all gonna do to us? I, I'm never wearing Gucci. Because I can't afford that anyway. So it was... <laughs> <laughs> when my closet threw away all my Gucci, which was nothing. But the point is, <laughs> have you been to the Gucci store? Yeah. I didn't even know they had one. My boy, he's very rich. He took me to the Gucci store. I was looking, I said, they sell this stuff? And I'm looking at the price tags. That's what my boy said, no lie. He, it was a t-shirt on sale for $200. That was the sale for a plain t-shirt. He said, excuse me, can I get this in a large? I said, nigga, you can get this in a Marshalls. Just come with me, I will show you a whole store full of this. What are you doing? Come on, I, I got the answers. I can boycott Gucci, because I can't afford that. But if the Dollar Tree do some racist stuff, I'm just gonna have to forgive and forget. That's, that's between y'all, fam. Cause everything is a dollar. The whole store. I don't care if they selling nooses on aisle five. We'll take your ass to aisle two for what you came for. And mind you, I could walk in the store, they could say, hey nigger, hey cracker, just come in here for what I came for. Don't mind me, it's just a dollar, boop. Thank you, cracker, and I walk out. Everything a dollar. I'm in the Dollar Tree. The only thing I don't like about the Dollar Tree, I don't like when I'm in the Dollar Tree, I see a pretty young lady. I try to approach her, and she give me an attitude like we not both in the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I'm in the Dollar Tree. This girl was like fine. I said, hey, boo, how you doing? She going, pss, pss, pss. Excuse you. I did not talk to dudes in Dollar Tree. Thank you. Pss, pss. We both here. <laughs> You work here. She had the name tag, the green polo, the whole shit. She was ready for action. And I was buying regular Dollar Tree approved stuff, regular Dollar Tree stuff that you can safely get from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> safely, you know what I'm talking about. I had paper towels, had them batteries. Fabuloso, I had Fabuloso, you gotta scrub hard, but it's a dollar. You gotta put some work in. Don't be, uh, don't be lazy. I had a candy bar. Fam, she was buying milk. You can't buy milk from the Dollar Tree. That's almost cottage cheese. You ever seen expiration date on Dollar Tree milk? Her expiration date said 9.45. I said, you got 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes dating hard, because you got people like that thinking they better than you when you're on the same position. All the relationship really is, what I learned, is finding someone whose weirdness you can deal with. Everybody's weird, you gotta find somebody whose weirdness you can deal with. I'm meeting chicks and I can't deal with day level of weirdness. I find out quick, it's, it's too much for me. Small stuff, I find out quick, I gotta go. I'm, I'm kicking them with this girl. We eating, little snacks. She pulled out a Kit Kat and just bit it. I said, bitch, you're not gonna break the bars up? <laughs> the bars on the Kit Kat? Did she just bite the whole fence? <laughs> Did she just forefinger a Kit Kat? Nah, that, I gotta go. You are a serial killer. Don't nobody. <laughs> You'll be at a woman's house and just, it ain't even that it's dirty, it just ain't clean. <laughs> Small stuff, she never got clean dishes. Like why are the dishes always dirty? She want to cook for me, but she ain't got no dishes. She cooked for me and put my food on the plate that's supposed to stay in the microwave. Nigga, this plate right here.
So I'm not eating on this bullshit. No, who eats off this plate right here? My spaghetti smell like popcorn. I'm not eating this. That popcorn smell does not come off this plate. I am not eating microwave popcorn spaghetti. That is... I can't do it, fam. It's little stuff. You meeting women, they be way too into their zodiac signs. As soon as you meet, how you doing? What's your sign? Bitch, West Side. I don't know. I don't follow all of them charts. <laughs> off the jump. They just too much with it, man. And then what will happen is sexually, when you with somebody for a long time sexually, y'all know each other. You don't got to try a bunch of stuff. You know what she like. You know what he like. And y'all can just get on about y'all day. You meet these people. They got these strange ideas sexually. I'm hanging out with this girl. We had sex for the first time. I wanted to get some hair because I'm an adult. <laughs> She told me, uh-uh, I don't get head on the first time. I said, well, do you give head on the last time? Because I'm never coming back here. This is... <laughs> I said, I'm not coming back. What? I'm not coming back for this mediocre vagina. Oh, this is... <laughs> That's why if you got somebody, you gotta keep them. Hold on tight. Some older people, y'all, y'all might not know that. Did you know men are sending women pictures of their penises? Did you know that this was going on, people? That's what I said. What? That's absurd. I think that's disgusting and rude for a man to send a woman a picture of his penis. I think it's classless. And the first time I did it, nigga, do you know? <laughs> she sent it back to me. I said. <laughs> Did she just return to cinder my dick pic? <laughs> and I took time on it. I got the lighting right. I got the vein in order. <laughs> you probably you gotta put the phone right here on it. <laughs> Close as can be. I sent it to one girl, she was highly impressed. <laughs> she was like, damn, is that you? Yeah, who else dick I'ma send you? <laughs> I don't even know where to get another dick from. <laughs> That's what she said, you could have asked your homie. I'm not asking my friend for no picture of his dick to send to you. <laughs> that is an uncomfortable conversation, fam. Let me get a picture of your dick, dog. <laughs> what? Man, calm down. For me, I'm gonna send it to her. <laughs> oh, I know you light skin. I'm gonna put a filter on it. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'm gonna get this right back to you, fam. <laughs> you know, we be taking all of these nasty pictures and we don't even understand technology as a nation. We think we do, but we don't get it. We take all these nasty pictures and they go in the cloud. And none of us really know what the cloud is. We have no idea. All I know is one day it's gonna rain. That's all I know. <laughs> There's gonna be dick pics coming all out the sky. You didn't bring no umbrella or nothing. You just... <laughs> You're gonna see a bunch of gay dudes like, yes. <laughs> yes. It's gonna be a bunch of gay dudes and Malik Yoba, like, yes. <laughs> I don't have kids, because I pull out. <laughs> but that's the trick. See, you know why y'all got kids? Because y'all tried to pull out and it didn't work, because it's another level to the pull out. You can't just pull, she'll wrap her legs around you real tight and you can't get away. <laughs> you gotta push out, that's the key. Bitch, get off me. You gotta get <laughs> up out of there. <laughs> Hit her with that Heisman Trophy. Ah, you trying to trap a nigga and you gotta get up out of there, people. <laughs> Cause child support is real. <laughs> child, I got an uncle on child support right now. It is real, people. Matter of fact, I just found out 
my dad still pays child support on me today. We just found out together a few weeks ago. My dad said, can you take me to pick up my check? I said, no problem, Pops, I got you. But I'm a little low on gas, I'm gonna need some ends. He said, once I cash my check, it's no problem. So we go get his check, we're in the car, we're driving to the bank, and as we're driving, my dad say, what the fuck? <laughs> he opened his check. They took out 75% of his check for back child support. And my dad said, child support? He 30. <laughs> I said, yeah, dad, I'm on your side, uh, but I'ma still need that gas money, nigga, so. <laughs> they didn't give me the money, pop, so. And when you go on child support, you gotta get a child support job. You know what a child support job is? Something under the table. We don't gotta bring my social security number into this equation. I'll do the work, you give me the money, we can go our separate ways. You ever meet somebody 45 years old? This nigga a DJ? This... <laughs> that is child support. <laughs> no, 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 I got what you want to hear. I got it all. What, the whispers? You want to hear the whispers? <laughs> reason, 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 reason. <laughs> My uncle got a child support job. This nigga been ducking child support for years. They can't catch him. He's too good. His job now is you ever go to like downtown, any downtown or like San Francisco, you ever see them niggas who be in all silver? <laughs> you ever see this nigga in the silver? <laughs> you ever see him in the silver? This nigga is making a killing. All nigga dressed like a real nickel. This nigga is... <laughs> Silvered out. <laughs> they can't get this nigga be doing it. They come put tons of money in that bucket. Child support could never catch him. And one day he was doing his thing and dancing, and I guess child support seeing his eyes through that aluminum foil. <laughs> and child support came and snatched this nigga's bucket and walked off. The cold part was he never broke character. Thank y'all so much for coming out. Appreciate y'all. God bless you all. Thank you, people. Thank you. Thank you.